lenses are very, very important, even in like a Twitter drama like this. And this is why you don't need to pick a side with mommy and daddy fighting. You don't need to pick if you are gonna be team Natalie, okay, or team Cat Black or team Vosh, right? Because you can understand that when you put on the debate lens, and the war lens that Vosh is using, he is correct and you understand his perspective, but you can also put on the video essayist lens, right? And see why she is perspe uh, why she is correct and understand why Cat Black was correct and what she was saying too. I get the feeling we're going to come to the conclusion that everybody sucks in this drama. How do you know? How do you know? You don't know. You don't know me. What if I come to the conclusion that everyone doesn't suck? Huh? What about that? So today's stream, I'm not going to cover history today. How about drama history? That's the type of history. Yeah. Okay. We're going to talk. Okay. You know what? You're right. This is a historical stream. We are going to be talking about um, history from the last four days. And we're going to talk about the long-term consequences of the virtual war between Cat Black, Vosh, ContraPoints that all started with JK Rowling. Let's get to the meat. Let's get to the drama. So if you guys, I mean, you guys have to all know about what was going on with Vosh, ContraPoints, J.K. Rowling. So basically what happened is Vosh tweet, Vosh makes this tweet um, about J.K. Rowling. All J.K. Rowling had to do was shut the fuck up and she could have been almost uncritically beloved for like a century. Women be quieter and start apologizing challenge. He's being ironically sexist. I know Vosh isn't sexist, but he's being ironically sexist, right? And of course, and she finds it because she name searches herself. And she says, what you and your ilk fail to appreciate is how tediously familiar I find your tactics. I had a violent ex-husband who used to tell me life would be great if only I'd comply, but you're making the same mistake he did. Women like me can't be bullied out of resistance. He actually, I don't think he, in, he didn't tag her. If you look at the original tweet, right? He didn't tag her. So I don't think he intended for her to see this. I think we can overall say he's kind of being a douche to J.K. Rowling. Now, he's frustrated with J.K. Rowling because of the transphobia that she's basically been accused of for a very long time. But anyway, so he responds to this and he feels like he's defending trans people while he does it. And a bunch of prominent trans women, particularly Cat Black, kind of come out and say, we weren't cool with you being like you were sexist to J.K. Rowling and like you don't need to be sexist to defend us. Now, it turned out that Cat Black and Vosh actually had a history, you know, a bounce go wow wow history that they, they sexted back in the day, which she outs publicly while shaming his dick. I think she says that he, she wasn't impressed by his, his white penis. Um, and then and like, it created this huge drama. She had this huge threat about it. Um, and then ContraPoints comes to her aid. Now, ContraPoints and Vosh were like kind of good with one another. I don't know. I thought they were friends. Apparently, they weren't as close as I thought they were. But ContraPoints comes to Kaplak's aid and then ends up blocking Vosh. And I think Vosh is very hurt by all this. I think he was shocked. Like I thought, I think he felt like he was making fun of J.K. Rowling. And he thought everyone would make fun of her with him. And then he was shocked that people were like, not cool with his response. So we're, we'll watch, watch Vosh kind of talk about it and explain his comments. Cause I actually think his explanation makes sense. Now, I just want to reiterate his explanation, in my opinion, does not defend him being sexist towards J.K. Rowling. In fact, I don't think there is a defense of that. I think it's pretty objective that he was being a douche to J.K. Rowling. But you have to remember that uh, someone like Vosh, I'm pretty sure, is a utilitarian. He's going to think of, like, greater good outcomes. And so I think it really frustrated him that everyone was so focused on, like, you know, some minor sexism, right? When of you compare it to how much all the effects that she has, particularly on trans people, and how often she bullies trans counts and stuff like that. We're all in this together, and there's a lot of disagreements among us, and we often don't get along so well. But politically, I think we should work together as much as possible instead of splitting into little factions, because we share most of the same interests. And I think the best way to do that is to build bridges instead of burning them. If you now, of course, Vosh's editor starts with that. Very smart, right? Start with that. Because, of course, it looks, it makes her look somewhat hypocritical. Now, what I'll say there, somewhat in her defense, is it's much easier sometimes you know what the right thing to do is but it's it's one thing to know what the right thing to do is it's another thing to actually do it and i say that as someone that like regularly does not take my own advice so you could say contrapoints didn't take your own advice there yeah so do we all okay we all say like how many times have i said like oh be let's be nicer on twitch right and then i'm like mean to a creator that pisses me off it's like 
emotions run high. And I think what she was focusing on, what I'm guessing is her friend was getting treated like shit. She came to the aid of her friend because she's a loyal and a good friend. And didn't and wasn't thinking of like the grander picture of like, you know, what is ultimately good for the left and stuff. Right. Um, and I don't necessarily blame her for that because I think it's something that we all do. You want to say like trans people have like a leg up when it comes to being able to give good take on trans issues. Yeah, sure. I don't think it makes them automatically right, though. I think I think that's silly. Does Candace Owens automatically have more of a point on race issues than me? When she said George Floyd deserved to die, do I just have to look at that and go like, well, like, no, of course not, obviously. When Blair White says non-binary people are like destroying trans legitimacy or whatever, like, no, of course not. I disagree with that. I do agree with what Contra is saying here, but the problem is she's implying that I disagree with this. and. So she says, I think you should think about what she's saying here instead of getting really defensive about her correctly, pointing out that your perspective on this is limited by your not being trans and not a woman. Doing edgy, ironic misogyny while defending trans people magnifies the grain of truth in what turfs say about there being misogyny in trans activism. Maybe your tweet at JK just didn't land the way you wanted. Okay, fine, it happens. But I get why you're so de defensive about being reasonable to criticism. I actually think that this this tweet exchange really demonstrates the different perspectives and how two people who actually are fighting for the same things are both creators and both like kind of like the you know the parents of bread tube I don't know what you want to call it and how they can start fighting about something like this and I really think it comes to tactics and areas um, and basically the difference between someone who's more into like the philosophy and um, uh, the advocacy that Natalie does is more focused on kind of philosophy and using she uses a Socratic method of like kind of um, a, actually a bunch of Socratic methods. But her one of her favorite ones is to kind of bring on kind of someone to sh demonstrate somewhat the other side's perspective and she doesn't gaslight she doesn't gaslight them she doesn't straw man them she gives their best argument right and then she counters it in like a very controlled kind of environment it's something that socrates used to do all the time it's a tactic of a lot of great philosophers and it's very effective in changing people's minds right and it's one of the reasons why she's so famous because she does it really 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 well now vosh changes people's minds in different ways Right? Vosh is a debater. So Vosh needs to focus. And the key is in order to change someone's mind in a debate, you need to win, especially in these. You need to win. And I think that this is the core. Now, for Natalie, she doesn't need to quote unquote win in order to change someone's mind. Right? They're both playing, they both have the same goal. Okay? They're both trying to create a purple road or what I don't know and they both have you have different tactics and those tactics are both very effective in getting there for different types of people the type of person that's going to be converted by Vosh's stuff is very different than the type of person who's going to be converted by Natalie's stuff but because they have those different tactics they need different there's different rules to use those tactics right and there's different tools that you need for example, Vosh needs to win. Natalie doesn't necessarily need to win. She focuses much more on empathy and like in a well-organized and edited video or um, that is much more of a vis video essay. And I actually think that this is the core of their disagreement. And th so this is like my, I guess, this is my thesis on, this, on the subject, that I actually think they're both completely correct. And they're just operating in different lanes and they can't see one another's lanes. And that's basically, that's, that's my theory, right? Now, this is not to say that Vosh hasn't fucked up. I don't think he should have been sexist towards J.K. Rowling, right? But I can understand, I understand why he did it. And I understand why it's a good tactic for him and what he does. And Vosh is really, really, really good at what he does. He's an excellent debater. 
There's a reason why so many people are being changed by his minds. And Natalie's really, really good at what she does. And I think that this is like, it's one of those like unfortunate things. And I wish they would kind of see what one another, like how they both just do different things. So you're, it's like, so Vosh is like, hey, you got to understand. And he's going to focus very much on winning the debate which is how he converts people. This is how he helps trans people. He wins, he wins good debates and he's, and he has, and he's trying to get her to understand, don't you want like uh, the aspect of winning, right? And what he needs to do to win, right? And a huge part of winning is not seeding ground, right? Because you need to see it like a war. And Vosh treats this like a war and he should in when it comes to how his, his area and his tactic, right? Um, so he knows that he, um, what do you call it? That like being sexist to George Jake Rowling, probably a shitty thing to do, right? But you don't accept that. You don't advocate it. You don't tweet about it, right? Because it's like seeding ground, right? Whereas someone like ContraPoints is like, no, but a huge part of how she converts people is empathy and focusing on the other person's perspective. And then overall, changing the person's mind after the fact, right? Through conversation. And so, of course, for her, what Vosh does, she's much more focused on the sexism part, there's probably a, a multitude of reasons. I mean, she's a woman, so I mean, just in, in general, it sucks as a woman seeing any kind of sexism, even if it's directed towards someone you dislike. It's just because, like, it feels bad. But on top of that, it probably makes her job a little harder because now when she has to do, like, a, I don't know, like her video or something, right, now to legitimately give the other perspective, which is something she's very good at doing, and being honest about it, she now has to say that there is some legitimate, there is some like misogyny that actually does happen, right? Because it's important for how she converts people, right? And so it makes it her job a little more challenging. It's like, I understand why she's frustrated. And I also understand why he's frustrated. And it's like, to me, it's just like a classic. And I, I look at this, like, I'm like a military historian, okay? These people are both fighting a war and they're on the same side, okay? What's an example? I, I'm watching a lot of Vikings. So it's like the English, okay? Um, so the, the English are fighting the Vikings. And the kingdom of Wessex is focused much more, wants to focus on defense and build an amazing siege, like to, to defend themselves from a siege and build amazing walls and, um, and focus on grain supply and all of these things so that they can outlast a great siege um, and, uh, and, and maybe plan a nice attack from behind, right? And then someone else who's fighting the Vikings, like say Mercia, and they're like, no, like we've always fought the Vikings in the North. Let's focus on like a, a brilliant battle strategy, right? Where we make sure that we have the high ground um, and we attack them so that they end up in the marshes and they get stuck with their shields. Um, and both of those kind of counter one another and they both just have different tactics. And both of those would probably be very effective, but you can't do them at once. And I think, Again, I think Vosh is so focused on, he's very much focused on like on what he needs to do to win um, because winning for him, and this is true, right? Just brings a lot of more people to his side and to uh, people who are advocating for trans rights. Um, and so, and when you're thinking about winning, when you're in a debate, you never, when you're like properly debating, you do not ever want to like seed ground even when the other person is correct about something. Because that, that, if you do that, you're a bad debater. It might make you a more honest inter interlocutor. That's why, like, you know, having a rational discussion is very different than debate. But if you're playing for an audience and all those things, it's, it does, you shouldn't do that. I don't know if I worded that correctly. That as a whole is the conclusion that I kind of came to from what I saw. Natalie's thinking much more like a philosopher, like, a, like an essayist. And Vosh is thinking like a debater. And they're both completely correct. And this is one of those unfortunate situations where it in intersects in, in a negative way. I think Vosh is also frustrated that Contra decided to attack him online rather than settle in DMs, since Contra was essentially defending someone who was kind of abusive while talking about his white dick. I actually, I want to get into that, and I want to get into what Kat did and whether or not it was sexual harassment. We'll get into that soon. Offensive about it because I don't disagree with it. You know, believe marginalized people is a norm that is encouraged in leftist spaces for good reason, much like believe victims or believe women. And these norms were established to counterbalance the mainstream tendency, which is not to listen to marginalized people or to victims or to women. But any norm can be abused. And the blunt fact of the matter is, sometimes 
marginalized people are wrong. Sometimes people calling themselves victims are obscuring a more complicated situation. And it's even happened once or twice that a woman has lied. And actually interesting, as someone, you guys know, I've been honest that I'm not a fan of critical race theory overall. I think it's a useful lens sometimes, but it's something that I, it's, it's a lens that I don't use a lot. Let's just say that, right? Um, but I, I don't completely dismiss it. I think it has some good ideas, right? But I think overall, I have a lot of problems with it. My two main problems with it. Number one, it comes from critical theory, which I disagree with, right? Which is a lack of belief in objective truth. I disagree with that. And number two, something else I don't like about it is the consequence of lack of objective truth, right? It means that there's a less of reliant on things like objective studies um, and the scientific method and more on the focus on lived experience. Now, the concept of lived experience, I'm sure you've heard about it a lot on Twitter. People use it all the time. I mean, I've used the term, right? Um, and this is something that's been kind of like perpetuated by critical race theory. And I think it's some, I, I think it's important to listen to people's lived experiences, right? Because it brings you closer to truth. But I don't think it's the end all be all. Um, the way and critical race theory really props up lived experience above any kind of scientific um, methods or studies as the objective form, as the and the any and not the objective form, but the the thing that brings you closer to truth, you, um, because there's no such thing as objective truth. So you need to look at the their own subjective truths. So those are the things that I don't like about it. Now there's a lot of great things about critical race theory, um, especially with how much they. Um, is focused on kind of dissecting and bringing apart a lot of like these kind of like old narratives that we just assumed were objective, but they're really just like white narratives. I think a lot of this, that's the why it's a good lens to put on sometimes, but I don't think it's a good lens to always have on. No, CRT is not mainly about systems. A, a lot of people, okay, this is a misunderstanding that a lot of the left has, right? Um, is that they get CRT confused with um, what do you call it, with any form of like racial history in the past um, and like black civil rights history. And they also get it confused particularly with intersectionalism. Intersectionalism is a huge part of like what deals with like systems and all of that kind of stuff. And critical race theory builds upon that, but that's not its main, that's not its main differentiator, right? Kind of just, uh, the systems things are already like kind of accepted. Um, but anyways, so those are my, so I'm just being honest about my own preconceptions or my own biases, right? Now, Vosch likes critical race theory. We, we disagree about that, right? Um, and to my knowledge, ContraPoints does as well. And so it's interesting, right? Because according to critical race theory, right, they are correct when they say that someone like Cat, uh, Cat Black, right, because she is trans, she's, um, uh, her opinion should be more valued right, when it comes to a trans issue than someone like Vosh who is not trans. I mean, it's not critical race theory, right, because it's not a race thing, right, but it's, it's very, it's a, a very similar tent, like, you would be, you would be a hypocrite if you believe in critical race theory and you don't believe in that, right? So, I think Vosh, like, probably, I don't know, maybe he realizes this, but Natalie was being actually very consistent with those admins when she said that Kat's opinion had more value, right? Like that's very, that is very consistent with critical race theory, right? This is a, this is actually one of the testaments part of critical race theory and critical theory in general is that like someone who, who is connected to the issue, right? Who, that their lived experience is much more valuable. Now, I really disagree with that, right? Now, Vosh comes to the conclusion, even though he likes CRT, right? He thinks that it means that it's, it's more likely to be valuable, but it's not necessarily valuable. So it's like, he's more likely to listen. He might listen to a trans person first because it's more likely to lead to truth, but it, not, it won't necessarily be that truth, right? So he still seems to have this concept of objective truth. It's kind of counter to CRT, right? So he kind of ends up somewhat in the middle. And I think that that's like why he got frustrated with that because he's like, well, if a trans person says that, um, you know, if say like Blair White, says that um, J.K. Rowling's not a, trans, a transphobe, does that mean that she's just correct? Um, because that, no, like maybe she's more likely to be correct, but it doesn't, but sometimes people break norms, right? Now, I'm actually more, now I don't even agree with what he's saying. Now I understand that perspective and I think it sometimes could be valid. But to me, having a living, and this is just like my, I don't know if it's bias, right? But um, having a lived experience, 
right? I think can is just as likely to make you correct about something as it is likely to make you incorrect about something um, because of bias. So I'll give you an example. So I'm a, I'm a Jewish person, right? A lot of people, and you guys might know this, I talk about it a little bit. And I think as a Jewish person, um, I've had a lived experience of being raised Jewish, being raised in a Jewish community, um, having the fear of the Holocaust being taught to me constantly, uh, being raised with Zionist propaganda, tons of shit, right? And on top of that, right, also dealing with anti-Semitism and everything. And so it's very frustrating when, say, like, I'm talking about a Jewish issue and then I have, like, someone who's not Jewish intercede and tell me, oh, like, anti-Semitism's not really, really that bad. Right? Or... Um, you know, oh, Jews are just seen as white when it's just not been my experience that Jews are seen as white, right? Um, or, uh, I don't know, there's just like, there's so many examples of like, and I, it happens all the time, it's very frustrating. And, um, and so the instinct is to be like, well, this is my lived experience. It's very frustrating that you as a non-Jewish person are telling me what you think my experience is, right? Um, or are you telling me something? Now, but the thing is, is that on the other side is that my Jewish, my Jewish upbringing also gives me bias. Um, so, um, and this is something that I've had to overcome my whole, honestly, my whole adult life in school. I felt like people didn't, I, I felt like people discounted my opinions on Israel. Um, and to this day, people do that all the time. They assume that I'm way more pro-Israel than I am all the time, right? Because I'm Jewish. And, um, and people discount things. And in some ways, right, like I understand the perspective because in reality, most Jewish communities are raised with lots of Zionist propaganda, right? Like I've never, I've never seen a synagogue without an Israeli flag beside it. Very, very common. And, um, and so there are like biases. And also then there's the emotional side of it. So because when anti-Semitism happens to me, it's really, really big. It's a big deal, right? And it probably feels like a bigger deal than, say, I don't know, when like something sexist happens to an, a woman, right, or something like that, uh, when so to someone else, just because it was my experience, right? And we're naturally, and emotions are going to be involved, and all these things, and I'm hurt by it, and I'm traumatized by it, and so I'm naturally going to kind of blow it up in my head, and maybe more than what's rational. So lived experience can make you more likely to find truth. But I also think it can make you just as unlikely, sorry, just as likely to find things that are not true, right? Because of that bias, because you're so close. And we have a lot of evidence for this. This is something, we have a lot of evidence for this. This is one of the reasons why doctors are not supposed to treat their own family members. Now you would think that a doctor is a more, you know, they should be treating their own family member because like maybe they know their child, they know their child really well, right? They have so much more knowledge, but having that more knowledge also comes with some bad stuff. It means that they're too close to them. It means that there can be, there, there's too many emotions involved. There can be, a, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A conflict of interest, conflict of interest. If you have a lived experience, I want to hear that. Just, I want to be careful. It's not just another proxy for vanity. And it's like, just in general. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like the concept of lived experience. There's also like lots of other effects of it. Um, is that a lot of people, it pushes people and it pressures people to talk about their lived experiences as a way to give validity to their, to their opinions. And it forces a lot of people to be uh, op to talk about something that was traumatic for them that they don't feel comfortable talking about. Um, we actually saw this actually happen firsthand on Twitter. I don't know if you guys remember. There's um, uh, RGR. Um, she has a girlfriend. Now, I don't really get along with RGR. Okay? I mean, that, that, I, I think people know that. But I'm pretty sure she has a girlfriend. Um, her name's Pixie. Now, Pixie was in closet, was in the closet as a trans woman. And so, and because of like this idea, so of course, and when she talked about trans issues or when, um, when she felt like she was being misgendered or something like that, right? There was like, I'm, I'm assuming people didn't value her responses as much because they would say, oh, you're cis, you're cis. But in reality, she wasn't cis, she was a trans woman, right? Um, and so she ended up feeling pressured um, and basically being forced to out herself. Um, in order to be seen as valid. 
Um, and I, um, I saw it another time when on a prime panel where no one was listening to one of my friend's perspectives. I'm not going to say her name because she probably want to remain anonymous where they were talking about sexual assault and all the women were, were kind of using the fact that they'd had a sexual assault as evidence for their opinion, right? Or to make their opinion um, more valid. And my friend didn't want to talk about her sexual assault. She didn't want to bring it up. She wanted to admit it, um, which was totally her right. And because of that, her opinion was considered invalid, right? And so that effect really fucking sucks. So it's just like, I think in general, you can like, again, the lens is useful. And it's a, it's very important to listen to, to listen to say a group, a member of an, uh, of an oppressed group and hear their stories. I love stories. I've always thought stories are the best way to change someone's minds. Right. But it's not the end all be all. And it can just as likely lead to bias as it leads to truth. So it's just important to have those things. And I don't think it like, and this is one of the reasons why I would disagree with Natalie here, where I would say, I really think at the end of the day, it's about the validity, validity of the argument. And I just wish we would just treat those arguments kind of in a vacuum in an, in of themselves. Um, and so like, if I bring up, if I'm talking about Israel, Palestine, just disagree with my argument. Don't bring up the fact that I'm Jewish as a way to make it more valid. Don't bring up the fact that I'm Jewish to make it more invalid, invalid, (laughs) invalid, right? Just deal with the argument itself because I really feel like who it's coming from, it can go both ways. It can go both ways. Yeah. It's not as important to share, but it's important for the individual. Yeah. I totally understand that. Um, but yeah, so anyways, we'll, we'll go, go back to the video. Yeah, we should probably talk about the Contra thing, right? There's drama, you're tired, please no thoughts, slime stream part two. Did I not demonstrate yesterday that I am, as they say, built different? I wouldn't worry about it. Vosh, I was proven wrong. I thought you were hyperbolizing when you said people were seating ground to JKR. I would say that the behavior of the online left... Notice how he uses the word seek, uh, seating ground, right? broadly in the past couple of days has been one of the biggest this is that's the type of language you think when you, when there is winners and losers like a war secessions of of ground to transphobes that i've seen since i started my uh youtube career which is pretty impressive i have to say i guess since a lot of the people doing it are themselves trans i guess that they're right you know it's uh it's a self-determination thing right you know i mean <laughs> if they, if they want to i don't know seems dumb but not not the strategy i'd go with but I'd see a therapist after this because the gaslighting give you some bad psych damage. I wouldn't worry about me, okay? Yeah, Vosh, I thought your apology argument was weird at first, but I kind of get it now. Well, I'm about to repeat my argument for the umpteenth time because we're still getting a lot of people who are in... And we're not going to watch this whole video, but I do want you... I do want us to listen to Vosh's argument here, which I think is interesting. My community who don't seem to understand what I believe, but... Okay, well, let's get to it then. Two hours ago, uh, ContraPoints blocked me on Twitter. The bridge is burnt, I'm afraid. Uh, Tragic. Now, like I said last night while streaming, if the bridge is to be burnt, it's not going to be from me. It would be from her, which is, well, which is what happened. To to give a brief summary, the basic gist of what happened is a few days ago, I tweeted some ironic misogyny while dragging JK Rowling, and she screenshotted it and made a big deal of it, and that a bunch of people on the online left, rather than like making fun of JK Rowling or pointing out that she's dumb or wrong or gay or whatever, Uh, attacked me for the ironic misogyny, which I'm okay with being criticized for the ironic misogyny, but the way in which the criticism took place made it feel... Okay, it's interesting that he says that because so many people think, and I thought this initially too, that Vosh was like dying on the hill of the critical... Like, can we all just like agree that like he probably shouldn't have done the misogyny, right? He didn't just... I mean, even if you hate J.K. Rowling, right? Um, It just... Every woman who's being talked to about that or like that kind of irony. I mean, there's also like being irony pilled. Like um, sometimes like I, I've been around so many people that are making these irony, ironic jokes. Now I am edgy as fuck behind closed doors. Right. Um, I make tons of Jew jokes and shit like that. It's a way I deal with my oppression and and shit. Um, but there it is i would be uncomfortable if like i was around people who were doing that all the time that were not jewish and i wasn't really close to right even if they're being like so called ironic um e- even if it's being targeted towards someone i really dislike like someone like ben shapiro right because if i saw like say vosh being like anti-semitic to ben, ben shapiro i'm gonna be like i mean i don't care about ben shapiro but i care about myself bro I'm like it's gonna suck 
Like it's, it sucks seeing something and it's, it's funny because if it applies to them, it probably applies to all Jews. So um, that I think like that's probably the blind spot that Vash had. But again, he's thinking like a war. And in a war, right, and he's right about this, right, is that in a war you make like a sacrifice. So I don't know, you'll sacrifice like some of your infantry so your cavalry can go um, uh, circle back and pincer them from behind. Right? Known strategy, okay? But, uh, sorry, sorry, infantry. Um, so, and, and so, like, people being mad about, like, the loss of infantry, like, Vosh is like, yeah, but, but my cavalry got behind, and then we won the battle. <laughs> um, like, d it was necessary, right? And um, so, it's like, it's again, it just demonstrates, like, the different perspectives of um, how they, like, of the people who are like against this versus for it, I really think it's it's looking it's versus looking at this like a battle versus you know the more contrapoints like kind of changing people's minds with that with um, like essays and ad, that type of advocacy. In reality, I really think this is the ultimate like video essays versus like debate bro um, conflict. I feel like the left was kind of implicitly ceding ground to J.K. Rowling by agreeing with her and that my behavior sort of warranted her general denunciation of trans people. And that, I think, is a problem. Oh, yeah. So, uh, like I have not been defending the ironic... Would you guys like to hear me talk to Vosh about it? I'm sure he'd be happy to do it. Like misogyny. And people who have been watching me through this drama can attest to that, by the way. I haven't been. It hasn't been about that. That's just not what I've been focusing on at all. The only position I really have on that is that I don't think it's that big of a deal. And by God, I will stand by that point. But... Yes. Okay. The big of the deal. Again, this, yo, my, my infantry analogy is so good. Okay. My infantry analogy is so good. So the infantry, right? Um, say he's okay to sacrifice the light infantry, right? Because it's not his best soldiers. Um, they've got uh, really light armor on them. They don't have, there's not a lot of money invested in them, right? Um, but he's not going to sacrifice his heavy infantry, which are a few steps behind, um, because they're far more valuable, right? So he would say like, okay, I'll do the sacrifice for the cavalry with the light infantry, but I'm not going to sacrifice the heavy infantry, right? And he'll say like, okay, there's an arbitrary line, right? And it's maybe some people think, oh, I'm not going to, I'd sacrifice the heavy infantry, right? Because they're not that as important, right? But he draws that line. I think it's totally fine as a, as a general in a war, you're going to draw the lines of, on what you're willing to sacrifice and what you're willing to. So um, he'd say, okay, um, I wouldn't be racist towards, because that's much more of a severe issue. That's harsher, right? Um, but I don't mind being some light sexism. Not like saying it's necessary or like morally good or whatever. I, I think those are very different things. You know, we all have different levels of what we think is acceptable, acceptable edginess. All of us engage. Ambrick, that's a very good point, right? And this is, and that's the difference of thinking. Honestly, what you bring up is the the complete difference of how a historian is going to look at the perspective, right? Like a um, an overall historian versus like a military historian, or or how a general is going to look at it compared to, say, the president of the country or the leader of the country. In some level of acceptable edginess. Have you guys watched a contrapoints video? It's not like there isn't ironic misogyny in there. We you know, we have arbitrary uh, thresholds. So, you know, that happens. Anyhow, people keep insistently arguing as though, well, I don't like the arguments a lot of people are using, you know? Um, I'm okay with being criticized for the ironic misogyny, but a lot of people, I think, again, are doing that seeding ground to J.K. Rowling thing. So one of the people doing that was Cat Black on Twitter, who posted this really long tweet thread, which was essentially criticizing me with arguments that I felt were pretty bad. Now, I have a... M well, now my opinion of Cat Black is not at all mixed, but at the time I had a mixed opinion of Cat Black, and I thought, I don't really... Now, I don't blame him for getting defensive, right? Um, it's hard to see things from like, again, when you're involved in, and people are criticizing you, it's hard to just see things objectively. Like when I mean shit on by anti-Semites and stuff, like it's very hard for me to be like, think objectively, like, oh, like, how are they thinking? What's their perspective, you know? So I don't even blame him for not thinking that way. Um, but I do think it probably would have been helpful really want to drag this drama out, you know? I'd rather settle it privately. So I DM'd Cat Black, saying that I disagreed with her, and asked if she would be interested in, um, in hearing my explanation for my behavior. Now, those DMs have been made public by her since, and I'll get to that, but you can look over those DMs if you want. They're public. I literally went over every single one of them on stream yesterday, and I think, and I believe this is about as objective an assessment as you can get, that I was very good faith, 
forthcoming, I haven't interested read the DM, in talking, so I have no on uh, that. polite, you know, at the very least, like early on, later on, the conversation, you know, degenerated and we got, you know, more shouty. But I, I really feel like a fair reading of that DM exchange between myself and her, which lasted a full hour, would indicate that I was engaging in good faith and that she was engaging in monstrously bad faith, like really bad faith. Her, like she would admit she wasn't listening to me. She said it was arrogant of me to even assume I could ever have a point over her because I'm cis and she's trans, just stuff like that, you know, like really, really bad stuff. But any. I really, really disagree with that sentiment, but at the same time, um, I'm not going to give Cat Black shit for it because, again, it's very emotionally frustrating Like when you feel like you have experience. And again, um, she has, like, to my knowledge, I, I actually didn't really, I didn't know who she was. She's actually a huge creator. I just, I, you can't know everyone in this space, and I didn't know... Um, I didn't know too much about her content, but apparently she's this huge, tra uh, this tr huge trans advocate, and um, and it's just like done a lot for the trans community. So I'm sure there's like a frustration, um, like when it came to that, um, when it came to someone kind of maybe she felt like Vosh was talking down to her, um, which men do all the time, even if they're not trying to. Anyway, frustrated, the conversation ended, and I didn't want to make a big deal of it. You know, like I didn't want to make it public. I wasn't going to talk about it on stream. I vague posted it in chat after the convo saying, oh, I had this convo with someone. It was so stupid. Oh, my God. I'm so glad this wasn't public or you all would have killed yourselves, you know, but I never was going to say it was Cat Black. Then Cat Black made a this is not a joke, hundred tweet tweet thread characterizing me in, I think, a very dishonest way based on the DM. I saw that tweet thread. It was so long. I didn't I, I got like four messages down. I was like, I can't. Nope. Exchange that we had had the previous night. And then when I tweeted about that at all she dropped all the dms leaking an entire hour's worth of exchange in private messages just phew. not only did she drop all of the dms she also said for no reason at all i don't think that's chill um but yeah i wouldn't have done that all that she and i used to sext over twitter which is true but i don't know how Whew, okay that part now, it's interesting. I saw her make a tweet and it, instinctively, I was like, when I heard when she outed that, I was like, ooh, ooh, that was my reaction. Like, you know, when you're like, oh, that's just. I don't know if that's like a chill thing to do. I I'm a huge privacy person when it comes to that stuff. Um, like if a guy hits on me in DMs, I don't even tell my friends about it. Um, the only time um, is if like it gets like he does something like if obviously if like someone did something super creepy and weird, I might mention it. But um, if it was just typical consensual something sexual or someone just hitting on me, so I'm never going to talk about it. Um, it's just I don't know. I just never thought it was a cool thing to do. Um, I don't think it's sexual harassment, though. People have been calling it sexual harassment. I think they're probably focusing later on the on the dick comment, which we'll get to. Um, but uh, I don't know. I just think I, I wouldn't call it sexual harassment just for this thing, but it's definitely not cool. You know, like I would say, I, I mean, I would use the word it's not classy, but that's probably a really classist thing. <laughs> I probably shouldn't use that terminology. <laughs> Finally, we can get the one true take. Thank you, Defect. I appreciate it. I, okay. I know I was scaring. Everyone was like, oh, like what's her take going to be? I'm interested to hear it. And here's some perspectives. But like, I, I'm never outed who, okay, there's some big streamers in this space. I'm going to vague post, okay, right now. Vague post, okay? You guys ready for the vague posting? Dun, dun, dun. Okay, there are three very, very large streamers in this space, like extremely large, okay? who have wanted, who have hit on this VTuber, okay? They've hit on it. One in particular probably wouldn't want people to know about it. But I have never outed them. I've never talked about it. Um, even if, even though I wasn't interested. I'm not going to make fun of them. I'm not going to mention it. I just don't think it's a classy thing to do. Um, and... Eris are so popular. No, it's just every every female on Twitch gets it on like this, okay? Trust me. I'm sure, like, someone like Denims, who shows her face, gets it way more. Um, but 
I'm not going to mention their flirts if I thought they were cringe. Like, I'm not going to screenshot it. It's just mean. I don't know. It's just kind of mean, mean girl behavior. I just don't like it. It's like, it takes a lot of guts to hit on someone that you like. And to have them make fun of you or make fun of like your sex and stuff, it's like so personal. It's just shitty. It just seems like a really mean thing to do. The only time I could think of that I would like out that I had done something sexual or like something like that with someone uh, like in like a very public way was if I felt like they did something really, really wrong, right? Um, like to do with that. Like I felt like they'd sexually harassed me. It was not consensual. I don't know, something like that. Uh, even then, like I, I'm just a very private person. So it's like, it's just very, um, but I have heard some good arguments that women should be more open about it. Um, and there's like a consequence to it. So it really, it, it sucks. Like it's when you make fun of someone that's hit on you, like, um, I, and I see girls do this all the time. I don't see guys do it as much, but I'm sure I, I have seen it happen occasionally. But it's kind of like normalized within like femme culture where you bring up a guy and you just like kind of talk about it and you casually talk about it and you just think it's like chill. And it just it's always made me kind of like uncomfortable if it's in a private conversation with like very close friends. Sure. But um, especially in like a public way, I don't know, it just seems mean. And I know Vosh is like, I'm a tough, I'm a tough guy. I'm a tough sis man. I can handle it. I'm, I'm so strong. Look at my beard. I'm a manly man. Okay. Like, I, I wouldn't blame him for being hurt by it. Like, I'd be hurt by it. I, I'd be really hurt. Um, so maybe he's trying to act tough or whatever. That doesn't bother him that much. But yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's I, I think it's kind of mean. Well, that's relevant. But um, it's interesting uh, actually. Uh, Cat Black made a Twitter post, and I wanted to get your guys' perspective on this um, because it made me think. Because again, my inst my initial instinct was like, yeah, this fucked up. And she made an interesting post where she's like, was it shitty of Stormy Daniels to be open that she had had sex with the president? Was that like, you know, was that bad, right? Um. And my instinct was like, oh, well, it's a different situation. Like, um, you know, he's the president of the United States. He was breaking the law. Like, he was also committing adultery. Like, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. Like, um, but uh, I don't know. But it just, it did make me think that it was like, when is it okay? Like, why, why are we so private about, like, sexual stuff? Like, um, and was it just instinctively something really bad she did and what the argument was? So... I'm really interested in your guys' perspective on that, like why that would be different. There's literally a legal issue about him giving her hush money. Yeah, I, I, I agree. So I do think it's, I, see, okay. So then my instincts were right. I wanted to, I, I just wasn't sure. My instinct was like, it feels like a different situation. Didn't he pay her not to speak about that? So she's trying to not be silenced. Do you think it's Kat's comment was racist? Um, okay. I think if people want to have, like, racial preferences with dating, sure. It's something that I don't understand. I don't have any racial preferences with dating. I don't get it. Um, but I do have other problematic stuff with, with dating. I think we all have problematic shit. Right? Um, so, uh... Yeah, lots of people have problematic things, okay? Like, I have a friend who was into fantasizing about turning a woman into a cow against her will. I think it's called a transformation fantasy. It's a thing. I don't know. A little weird, okay? A little, a little strange, but, um, I mean, I would say it's a little problematic. Forced changing body into a, a cow, I feel like that's that's bad. I think, I think that's bad. Um... A lot of people are into, like, I, people just can't help what they're into sometimes, man. Like, uh, as long as you don't act on shit that's, like, really, really bad, um, it's probably not that big of a deal. But, uh, I don't know. But, like, yeah, people have racial preferences. They can't help it. Um, I just, I do think that, like, talking and outing them publicly is kind of not cool. So I think it's cool for her. If she does, if she's not into like white penises, I think that's fine. Whatever. All right. Um, though I do think it's useful to be critical about where our instincts 
and come from, right? Like, I'm really attracted to a guy in a suit. I'm attracted to a woman in a suit, okay? I'm just, I'm, I'm attracted to people in suits. And, uh, <laughs> and so I'm always critical about, like, where does that come from? Like, um, I definitely have, like, classist, like, stuff, like, when it comes to just how someone presents themselves on attraction. And so I'm critical about myself. And I think it's important to do that, but you can still be like, well, it's still what you're into. Um, so if she's into white dick, that's fine. I'm sorry, if she's not into white dick, whatever. Oops, sorry, I hit my microphone. That's fine. Not the TV show suits. I thought that's that shit sucked. Um, but saying it so publicly, I don't think that's cool. Like she didn't need to say, like, I I know it was kind of an edgy comment. It's not that big of a deal, but like, yeah, saying it, I don't know if that's if it's that chill. And then bringing up his penis, I don't think that was cool either. I'm pretty sure she deleted the tweet. Um. And I think this is something that, like, if she's just talking with her close friend, whatever. But, again, tweeting like this, it's just mean. It's just mean. And, yeah, it's not, like, the biggest deal in the world. But um, it's just not It's not cool to make fun of someone's genitals. Like, especially it takes – I mean, I don't know about how Vosh feels, right? Um, but when someone sends, like, a nude, it's, like, a very vulnerable thing to do, right? And – in a consensual situation where you're both like enjoying it, blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, um, it just sucks like to have someone make fun of a part of your body. It's like every woman's nightmare. I'm sure a lot of dudes nightmares too. So I do feel like if the genders were reversed instinctively, everyone would be like, Oh, that's really fucked up. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't know. It made me really uncomfortable. I don't, I, I don't think that was chill. I also, again, I feel like Vosh is acting more tough about it, you know? I just, like, I just imagine if, um, so <laughs> okay, so, like, my body is, let's talk about my body, okay? We're going to talk about my body, I right know. You guys ready for this? My body is very pale. I've talked to you guys about this, that I'm paler than white people, and most white people have like a pink, a pink tinge to their skin, but I have like, because I'm mixed race, like I have like, it's more just like, like neutral, like just pure. It's like white, like a piece of white paper, maybe with more of like a yellow tinge. And because of that, I'm like see-through, like legit, I'm see-through. Like if someone like put like a fluorescent light, like on my boob and they're like, Okay, you could probably see some veins. And anyway, so if like I took a nude and it was bad lighting, so it was like the fluorescent light was on there and you could see all the veins. And then like the guy posts about it. I don't know, say like Destiny posts about it on Twitter. And then says that he wasn't impressed by my veiny boobs. Okay. Um <laughs> that's a really mean comment. Release the nudes. I'm a ginger, so I never call myself white. I'm translucent. Yeah, translucent people stick together, okay? My first, like, super serious boyfriend was a biology major. And biology majors have, like, since then, biology majors have always been into me. Like, I swear, I attract them like a magnet, okay? Like, they just, genomics, you know, medicine, biochem, I don't know, all of that shit. They just, they love it, okay? It's because of the, you could, I'm see-through. They just love I don't know. Poor slitter powder. I respect DMs. I am not without boundaries, but communal space is for everyone. And I am not backing down from the space being free movement. I don't understand. I feel like I missed a part of that. This was a great time to drop by and say hi. Hey, Mad Lad, how you doing? How you doing? Okay, let's get to it. And it felt kind of weird to just bring that up. And I feel like I would get flack if I brought that up. Like, out of no- Okay, Kat is mad because Vosh's joke is supposed to have a deeper, wider consequences. Yet, as a trans woman, she's attacking someone's genitals with James. One, far worse from what he did. And two, someone, something she would deeply understand is wrong. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I, 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 I could see that. I could see that. She probably just thinks, like, he's, like, cis, so it's, like, not that big of a deal 
Um, but again, this is like something, this is one of the reasons why I just don't like, I don't like seeing people in like who's oppressed and who's, who's the oppressor. Um, and when it comes to individuals like that stuff, you should look at systems. Um, you shouldn't apply that to individuals and people, and you see lefties instinctually, like there's a culture of applying that to individuals. You see like people say the most vile fucked up shit, like, um, uh, say, uh, like about like whoever and whoever is considered like the oppressor, whether it's men or white or straight or something like that. Um, or even Jews, like, um, uh, that it's like chill to say anything against them because they're the more powerful ones. Um, and I've never felt comfortable with that, particularly as a Jewish person, because it's like, that's easy against Jews all the time. It's like a reverse thing where they'll, they'll be like, oh, like, well, it's not bad to be anti-Semitic because like Jews like own the media. Yeah, I feel like she knows that she kind of fucked up. But um, again, um, I think someone, I think she fucked up. But again, I do not, this is something I really, really, really want to get us away from this idea. I don't want us to do the exact same thing that we are criticizing them for doing, which is just like, okay, Cat Black fucked up with the penis thing. She's a bad person. That's it. Don't watch her content anymore. She's in the bad category. No, people are complex human beings. Um, like, I disagreed with Vosh using the misogyny thing, right? But it gets complete, and I disagree, I've disagree. i disagreed with Vosh plenty on, on a bunch of things, right? Like, we disagree on CRT, we disagree on a bunch. But I think the overall, his overall contributions, way outweigh. Like, I try to look at him as a complex whole person. And you look at what he's done for, um, you, like, for the, uh, the, I've never seen someone raise money the way he did, raised for Ukraine. He puts so much effort in it. Um, he stands up even, he stands up to his own. He doesn't follow, um, he, does, he, he doesn't follow like uh, what people expect him to do. Um, he doesn't believe in like tribe politics. Um, he like, he stands up to, his, I, I love people who stand up to their own friends. I think that that is like the bravest thing in the world. Um, he's an excellent debater. Like he's converted so many people um, who thought that being lefty was just about being lovey-dovey and he demonstrated that, um, there's a lot of good facts and logic on their side too, right? And that's not just something Ben Shapiro gets to own. Like he's done a lot of great, right? Um, and so it, like you need to look at a whole perspective with someone. And I don't, I'm not as familiar with Kaplak's work, but I think that we should offer her the same thing where not to immediately just like completely dismiss her and just because she fucked up and once I, I do think, um, I do agree with her that I like, I understand when you're a trans woman, one of the shittiest things about like when you, uh, and I've heard this from other trans women, right? That like, it really, really sucks w once you transition um, or once, like once you at least start the, pro the process of transitioning, it's crazy how different the world treat treats you. And on one hand, you're happy you're being treated that you're a woman, but on the other hand, it's like a, sh a full blown shock at how much like it also sucks to be a woman and um and so you know i understand her getting that like instinctive response to just any kind of sexism um because misogyny is just like trans women deal with misogyny just as you know cis women do and it really fucking sucks so that's why she's done a lot of apparently she's done tons of advocacy um and I think like, and Twitter brings out, and guys, Twitter, like, I know this has been said over and over again, but I feel like people are still not absorbing it. Twitter brings out the worst in all of us. In reality, if Kat and Vosh um, and Contra had sat and had a conversation, I guarantee you none, none of this would have happened. But Twitter, it, the, the, the culture of Twitter, the fact of making posts and trying to get as many likes and the way the structure of like how you only you need a short post. It brings out the worst in everyone. God, the biggest evidence for that is look at my Twitter. It's fucking dumb as fuck. OK, you guys want to see the dumbest Twitter ever? Look, what is this tweet? People say monarchy is outdated, but imagine Hillary Clinton as your queen. Checkmate liberals like this is the type of what the fuck look at my nuanced my nuanced response to the serfs here probably because fuka was a pedo
This I stand by. This is a good tweet. Why is every 90s music video some dude walking down the street? That's 100% true. I, this is my most popular tweet, like, right now. Like, this month. Like, what the fuck is that? J.K. Rowling just retweeted the Vosh Pedo meme. She has fully entered the discourse. Curious to hear her thoughts on Mr. Girl and C-Word debate. Should I angle for an interview? Like, honestly, that is all Twitter is good for. It's fucking jokes. Jokes and memes. And having any kind of serious discussion is just going, is pure chaos. It brings out the worst in everyone. So again, even if you think Vosh was right in this, don't start hating Cat Black as a response. I know she fucked up with the penis thing, right? Um, I agree that was a chill. Hopefully she says sorry at some point. But again, the culture of Twitter like enables this shit. Um, and I mean, you look at some Vosh tweets, and there are a lot of a lot of his are pretty shitty. Didn't Vosh start this in DMs? Yeah, I, I com and I commend him on starting in DMs. It should have stayed there. It should have stayed there. So, I'm, I'd be interested to hear her. I think, like, if I get to see a video on her perspective on this, it might kind of make things a little more complex. Because right now, I just, I don't know her. I, all I have are tweets. And that is such a bad way to get to know someone. Again, I look like a fucking dummy. <laughs> like, like on my tweets. One of my dumbest tweets, okay. One of my dumbest tweets is I said that I missed the hippie left. Do you guys remember that tweet? And the worst part is Twitter is so simple, right? So like you make like one tweet and you don't, you can't add any nuance. And I think people assume that like I was the hippie left that I missed because I missed it, which makes sense. But I wasn't like, I'm not, you guys know, like I'm not a nonviolence, peace loving, love is amazing, all that kind of shit. I'm not that type of person. I've never been that type of person, right? I'm not a tree hugger, okay? Um, and uh, the, I okay, I have been that type of person. I gave it up when I was 17 when I quit marijuana, all right? Um, but when I made that tweet, everyone assumed that I was saying that because I missed the hippie left, it meant that I am the hippie left. But in reality, what I, my point was actually a lot more nuanced, right? And you can't communicate that on Twitter, my point was that I missed, I felt like the hippie left provided an important part of the conversation. Um, and so I actually like the left right now. I think that it's changed in a lot of really good ways, but I don't, I wish that the hippie left hadn't completely died and it feels like it's totally dead because I really appreciate, I think they sometimes have good things to contribute to a conversation and sometimes it's really important when you're like in a room with advisors, you need like an advisor that's going to give a good perspective on everything. And I think like a hippie lefty type person is important to keep us somewhat measured and remind us that when we do have to enact violence as a society, right, or engage in something to think a little more critically before we engage, right? I think there's just like an important voice in the conversation. But can I communicate that in a Twitter post? Not really. I don't know how to do that gave up left to somebody i meant i gave up hippie okay whatever <laughs> whatever so anyways nuance just doesn't carry over on twitter whatsoever um so this whole conversation should just be done in dms i really really hope um with contra i really really hope that her and vosh um like she unblocks him and they they chat about it privately i understand she came to her friend's defense she's a good friend i mean most good friends will do that but um, yeah, they should have this conversation DMs. Anyways, we'll continue the video. Oops, oops, oops. He made kind of like a throwaway dumb comment. Oops. We're all in this together. Oops. And there's a lot. There. Nowhere if I had a disagreement with like a woman, you know, like who I was arguing with. And then later she, and she deleted this, of course, because like, how could she not? But she like made comments about my penis unprompted, which again is very weird. It's, uh, it's really, really, really strange. <laughs> Because, you know, she was talking about how she, she had sexed me before, and then, like, she posted this. First of all, I'm a social justice black mage. Do I like white dick? Not necessarily my top choice, but I'll settle for it. This is very strange. Saying this while being black does not make it any more cute, I have to say. I was underwhelmed in this particular case, though. Maybe Cat Black likes small penises? Uh, 
it's just shitty. I understand it's not as shitty. I understand the power dynamic between white people and black people are totally different. Um, and uh, a, a white person saying this about, like, a say, a black dick is, is very different, right? Because there's different histories associated with that. But it doesn't make it any less shitty, right? It's still shitty. She wouldn't think mine is cool, but whatever. She seemed to like it at the time. Anyway, I think this is a... I think this is a very, very weird thing to tweet. Can we acknowledge that? Like, it is funny, and I have a good sense of humor about it, but imagine if I had a disagreement with a female content creator, and in response to us burning a bridge publicly, I leaked that years ago we used to flirt, and then yeah. insulted her pussy. I would get in a lot of trouble for that. Like, that would follow me for a long time, you know? Again, I can roll with the punches, but I, I just, yeah, that, that behavior to me. Yeah. Jeez, you know? He's hurt by it. I could tell. And I don't blame him for it. I don't blame him for being hurt. I'd be hurt too. Yeah, I would be like excised from from the online let like that would be that would be really, really bad. But look, the point is I think that Cat Black I, I think there are a few Um, Bleep in, I, I totally agree. Saying it's publicly like that was just I don't know. The humiliation of it just sucks. Negative things I could say about Cat Black that like wouldn't be true, honestly. Cat Black never had a point on me, admitted she wasn't listening to my arguments, and just misrepresented me the entire time. Again, I went over it all last stream. I can't go over it again, again, again. You can look at it if you want. Yeah, and again, this is hard, right? Because when I was looking at Twitter, I misunderstood what Vosh was saying too, because again, Twitter sucks. When I listened to his stream, it became much more clear what his argument was. But again, a lot of people are not going to have the time or want to do that. But then the really frustrating thing happened. The frustrating thing is that in the midst of all of this, you know, of course, everyone's jumping on me. In the midst of all of this, ContraPoints jumps on me too, which I really... Okay. Look at his face. Does your heart not break a little? Like, look at his face right now. That's the face of someone who's really hurt. Because I know, I know personally, he really admires Natalie. There is nothing that feels shittier than someone, a hero of yours, someone you admire. Um, you know, uh, hurting you, right? Like stabbing you in the back, stabbing you in the front, anywhere. That happened to me at the beginning of the, when I entered this space where a creator that I told you, a creator that I liked, um, was really mean to me. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, it feels like shit. It's easy to discount someone's opinions when you think they're a dumbass, but when you think they're cool and they're smart, which Natalie is, it sucks. It feels bad. It's bad. Really didn't expect because ContraPoints usually makes an effort to not engage in, um, in, in Twitter drama. I think she deleted these tweets, which she does often, but the ContraPoints deleted tweet Twitter account has me covered here. Contra says, I think you should think about what she's saying here instead of getting really defensive about her correctly pointing out that your perspective on this is limited by your not being trans and not a woman. So I'm going to break down why I think these tweets from ContraPoints are really bad. I think they're, I think they start out being misinformed and end being bad faith. And it's something I've never seen, uh, uh, something I've never seen from her before, which is really weird and disappointing. But anyway, I want to explain why, because I think ContraPoints is unambiguously in the wrong here. And I genuinely, sincerely don't think I did anything wrong in this interaction. And I just want that to be known because I really respect Contra. And if my falling out with her is going to be a public affair, then I damn sure want to make sure that my, uh, my account of the issue is public. Her first thing here is kind of misleading because I have never pointed out that my perspective on these issues isn't limited by me being a cis guy. I've said that on and off stream a lot of times. Lived experiences can give people a better understanding of these issues. My only point is that they don't make you automatically correct on these issues. That's the only point that I have. Yeah. If you want to say like trans people have that's like what, a leg I think up. That's exactly what I said, right? That was like the difference with that perspective. Now, I would say to Vosh, right, if I was talking to him, is that a huge CRT does not necessarily agree with you here. Now, it's OK for him to mostly like CRT, but disagree with this aspect. Right. That's fine. Um, but a huge part of CRT is saying like CRT does believe that Cat Black will always have the, um, the more true perspective and, and her opinion is more valid than yours, no matter what. Right. Um, like, that's just a thing when it comes to being able to this is my one of my main issues at crt now you could still like crt and just disagree with that part right again 
CRT does bring up some really good stuff. You don't need it. It doesn't need to be like this black and white shit. They give good take on trans issues. Yeah, sure. I don't think it makes them automatically right, though. I think I think that's silly. Does Candace Owens automatically have more of a point on race issues than me? When she said George Floyd deserved to die, do I just have to look at that and go like, well, like, no, of course not. Obviously, when Blair White says non-binary people are like destroying trans legitimacy or whatever, like, no, of course not. I disagree with that. I do agree with what Contra is saying here. But the problem is she's implying that I disagree with this. And I'm not getting defensive about it because I don't disagree with it. And then she continues, doing edgy, ironic misogyny while defending trans people magnifies the grain of truth in what TERFs say about there being misogyny in trans activism. So while I disagree with this, this does at least speak to the point that I'm trying to make broadly. So this would be something that I had wished I could talk with her about, you know, like I wish I could have had this conversation with her to explain why, because I don't think there's a grain of truth here. You know, I, I think they'll find that. Okay, so. I don't think Chad's trying to gaslight. I think there's just a disagreement. Now, the thing is, is that CRT doesn't believe in the concept of objective truth, right? So I shouldn't have worded it saying that, like, they think that, I don't know, like, if you're talking about black issues, that the black person's always right. Um, they just think that the black person's perspective is more valid, right? Um, I'm not sure about, like, the detailed philosophical language here, because, again, they don't believe in objective truth. Um, but they just think it's much more valid that grain of truth anywhere because they just make it up. They make up the grain of truth. It's not a grain of truth. It's it's a made up. Like, yeah, I, I don't believe that. And then she said, maybe your tweet at JK Rowling just didn't land the way you wanted. Okay, fine. It happens. But why get so defensive about reasonable criticism? Now, the thing that is weird about this to me is I remember reasonable criticism being a term Natalie ascribed to the bad faith engagement she got on Twitter in her canceling video, right? She would talk about in that video how when mobs of people were I know Vosh loved this video because he repeated it word for word to me when I was receiving quote unquote good faith criticism on Twitter mad at her over a pretty fake drama online you know they would not directly address the argument she had or treat her in good faith but allude to the hurt of others, the reasonable criticism, you know, it's a way of gesturing at an argument without making one and it's a way of substituting a real criticism with well anger posturing is a criticism. You can pretend you just want an apology. You can pretend you're just a concerned citizen who wants the person to improve. You can pretend you're simply offering up criticism when what you're really doing is attacking a person's career and reputation out of spite, envy, revenge. I, I mean, it could be any motivation. That language to me is, well, it's a little bit concerning. The thing is, is that Contra's probably thinking, well, I was giving you constructive criticism, right? Like, you know, I don't think you should have been that sexist towards J.K. Rowling, right? And again, this is, and Vosh isn't hearing it because he knows that criticism's not valid for the war he's fighting. And this goes back to the original theory I have about why there are, why they're both like right, but in their own worlds, right? Um, that what he's, that that dynamic um, of, the dynamic of truth um, and like, not necessarily truth, but like that you sacrifice. So he'll make a, a sacrifice for his, like uh, um, by, you know, sacrificing some of his infantry, right? Um, uh, for his cavalry to go get a win, right? And effectively, right, he did get a win. Um, but ContraPoints is not looking at this like a war like that, right? That's not how she... She examines that's not the, her type of advocacy. So she's right that it was problematic for what she does. Um, and so, yeah. AKA, it's the opposite of everyone's assholes. Everyone's right. But it gets a lot worse, unfortunately. Um, oh, dear. <laughs> well, you know. So I respond. How many reasonable criticisms of you have you, knowing what others don't, thought unreasonable? I've talked about all this before and will continue to. But she is saying we have to listen to Blair White or Candace Owen, Buck Angel over because uh, of got, uh, a guy. Right. Yeah. And, and that's I I agree. I agree with you. And this is one of my main issues with with uh, with critical theory in general, not just CRT, but like yeah, critical theory in general. Um, I, I think it's like is just in general, we should just deal with people's arguments um, instead of it's important for context, I guess, to see where someone comes from and stuff. But um, you shouldn't. Uh, that shouldn't at all be the end all be all, um, you know, you can hear, and this is again, and I actually think that a lot of this stuff ignores, um, the concept of systems in itself, right? Because if you are 
and I'm going to use being Jewish as an example because I'm Jewish, so I'm less likely to get flack for this, okay? So, I mean, feel free to correct me, homonyms, but that's that's what I've read. Um, I know it's a it's a large area, though. Anyways, um, so uh, I'll use being Jewish as, as an example. So, um, uh, I make Jewish jokes all the time, right? Like privately, I don't say them publicly. <laughs> I, I don't say them publicly for good reason. Okay, um, and one of the main reasons. Um, that I make those Jewish jokes, like there's complex um, multitude of reasons, like a way that uh, Jewish people, we usually use humor to deal with our trauma, that kind of thing. Um, but at the same time, it's also like we live in an anti-Semitic society. There's anti-Semitic systems in place that keep us, um, yeah, that keep us fucking, that have kept us down for thousands of years. And because of that, even as a Jewish woman myself, I can't escape being raised within a Jewish society, uh, like a, uh, an anti-Jewish um, society. Like, I just can't. Um, unless unless I lived, I don't know, unless I like grew up in like a fucking super insulated commune. And this is why there's actually a long history of Jewish anti-Semites. Yep. You heard that right. Jewish anti-Semites. Um, and like, there's actually, there's a amazing movie about this. I think it's called the defender, the printer. I don't know. It's with Ryan Gosling, um, where he plays a Jewish Nazi and there have been Jewish Nazis in the past. Um, and this is why, uh, you know, saying that when someone accuses me of being a Nazi or something, I try, I try as, as much as I can to not argue that as a defense that I'm Jewish. Sure, it means I'm less likely to be, right? Um, but at the same time, it's like as a Jewish person, I'm still being raised within the context. I'm still being taught. Um, there's so many things that are just like implicitly. Um, I mean, honestly, looking at the go like you just look at the goblins and the banks and J.K. Rowling. I, I grew up reading that, right? Of course, I'm going to like self like you absorb some things, right? It's the same thing that like how many trans women, we talked about this issue before on stream, how many trans women, um, absorb, you know, self in, like internalized misogyny and inter internalized uh, transphobia. I, I don't think I've met a trans woman that hasn't absorbed that stuff, right? How could, how could you not, no matter how good of a person you are, right? Like you were raised in a transphobic society, like humans were a product of our environments. Um, and so this is why I don't think identity while it's important and who we come from is important, it's not the end-all be-all. Um, and uh, so Candace Owens can be raised with tons of, and she's still being raised in an anti-black society that's like teaching her implicitly. Lots of, she's being, she was raised her, like her whole life with like these subtle, um, you know, uh, you know, subtle, subtle, some subtle, some not so subtle, like racist imagery and stuff. How can you not internalize some of that shit? We're all like raised in these, we're products of our systems. And so relying so much on identity, like conservatives focus so much on identity politics. And they, when they say identity politics, what they really mean is like anytime we're being critical about how someone's identity affects their place in society, right? Um, and, but in reality, that's not what identity politics are. Like identity politics is this. It's thinking that identity is the end all be all. When someone says, when someone defends me that when I, that they say, oh, she's not a fascist, she's Jewish, that's identity politics, right? And people defend me all the time. I mean, honestly, at this point, I'll accept any defenses, so it's fine. Like, if you want to defend me, all you want. If you want to defend me for identity politics, I'll take it. Okay, I'm desperate. Beggars can't be choosers. But um, it's still identity politics, um, and it's irrational, right? It's irrational. And uh, we should all kind of be a little more self-critical about when we do it ourselves. And God, I do it myself too, because it's just, it's such, such a habit. And on top of that, it just, it makes your opinions feel more valid. I find it interesting that people want to stake their ground with identity and I don't know who I am and I don't claim any territory. I am, um, yeah, no, I understand that. 
and especially for people who don't feel like they fit in anywhere and they don't have that sense of, sense of identity. Um, I know particularly um, uh, people with BPD, I think one of the core ten, uh, one of the core parts of BPD is having this like um, unsteady version of identity. And I can only imagine how lost they'd feel um, with this shit, right? We live in an economy, yeah, we do. Anyways, putting this back on, sorry. And I'm happy to hear out Kat or anyone else, but I disagree with her here, and I have reason to think little of her opinions. I think this is a fair tweet. All I'm saying is that, you know, maybe these criticisms aren't as reasonable as you think they are, and I'm happy to talk about it and hear out others' opinions, but I am, you know, I do believe that I'm in the right here, which is fair. And then I continue. With respect, the arguments you give in your videos support my position here. I do strongly believe this. And with all the associated context, this site really isn't the best place to speak in it with nuance. The reason I say this is because I don't want to argue with ContraPoints publicly on Twitter um, about something like this, you know? Like, wh what good outcome are we going to draw from that? I'm hoping Agreed. we can, like, talk on Agreed. stream or privately. Like, it's not about a, a content thing, just, you know, anywhere but Twitter. And then I say, I'm extremely confident you'd agree with me if you were fully caught up. This is where Nat starts getting worse, I think. It just strikes me as off that you're extremely confident you definitely know better than a trans woman who's been doing this activism for over a decade, and it kind of compounds my discomfort with the women be quieter tweet. This is a very, very strange argument to me. I know what she, what she meant by this, and I understand why she... If you only saw Vosh on Twitter, I think it makes sense. I disagree with it because I know Vosh, and... I've seen his streams and all that stuff. And I know that's not like, but again, this is why Twitter sucks so much because Twitter did kind of make him look like he was like this, like, oh, I'm a right cis man and I'm always correct. And anyone who disagrees with me is incorrect. And women be quiet. Oh, I'm just being ironic. But that's, that's again, anyone who watches Vosh knows that's not what he's like. Um, so <laughs> that's what he says. like. I don't know, that's my my watch voice. Okay. Yeah, like, when he types, he does, uh, via text, especially on Twitter, he does come off condescending, right? And for a woman, which Natalie is, we're used to having people, um, dudes be condescending to us. So, we're, like, we're going to be a little more sensitive to it when that shit perks up. Um, and that combined with the, it was just like an unfortunate combination, right? Um, and, Yeah. I, I wish she would have given Vosh a little more charity, but I understand why she did it. It's just like, again, this conversation shouldn't have happened on Twitter. Brought out the worst in everyone. Make. I like, I don't understand what this characterization is supposed to be. If I disagree with a person, like, what am I supposed to do? Like, we have a disagreement and it's like, oh, well, they're a trans woman who's been doing activism for over a decade. Never mind. I guess I don't disagree. Like, this is identity politics arguments from a person who I generally not associated with identity politics arguments. It's... It's woke school behavior. And this is the same language that people who attacked her on Twitter uh, would engage in to allude to some kind of broader, you know, like the trans community has problems with you, Contra. That kind of stuff. You know, believe marginalized people is a norm that is encouraged in leftist spaces for good reason. Much like believe. He's also autistic. Oh, I totally forgot he was autistic. That's interesting because I actually think he comes off really well socially, uh, like verbally. But yeah, but in text, he can come off condescending, right? For sure. Victims or believe women. And these norms were established to counterbalance the mainstream tendency. This is why the id pull argument is a necessary one. When you are no one, the aim of the ire towards marginalized groups, then you will not get hit by the fallout. This does not discount your opinions. It just makes sure you have to doubly share to hit your marks. Yeah, no, that's a good perspective too. That's a good response. Listen to marginalized people or to victims or to women. But any norm can be abused. And the blunt fact of the matter is, Sometimes marginalized people are wrong. Sometimes people calling themselves victims are obscuring a more complicated situation. And then I said, again, I know what Contra's response to be. She would be say, she would say, and I think correctly so, no, Vosh, this is a totally different si situation, right? In this situation, the marginalized person was right. Like, uh, Cat Black was correct. You shouldn't have been sexist towards J.K. Rowling, and trans women don't need, you don't need to be sexist in advocating for trans women. Right? That makes our job harder, right? And how we do our advocacy, which is through video essays. Because now you're feeding into the narrative that TERFs really push, and which is that, uh, um, which is a huge part of their video essays and stuff, um, which is that a lot of, you know, trans advocacy is misogyny. And so you're feeding into that, and it's very frustrating for like 
So they'll and so they'll feel like, oh, so now we're going to get and we're going to hold the brunt for what a cis man did. Totally understand that perspective. But again, Vosh is not thinking like a video essayist. He's thinking like he's in battle. And when and so, yeah, he did the misogyny tweet, but for it was a larger win, which he did get. It just shows like how much lenses are important. And this kind of brings this back to our initial discussion. You guys thought I wasn't really talking about it, but in the first hour of the stream, I was talking about lenses. And lenses are very, very important, even in like a Twitter drama like this, um, where in like, and it's really, really good. And this is why you don't need to pick a side with mommy and daddy fighting. Okay, you don't need to pick a side. You don't need to pick if you're going to be Team Natalie, okay, or Team Cat Black, or Team Vosh, right? Because you can understand that when you put on the debate lens and the war lens that Vosh is using, he is correct, and you understand his perspective. But you can also put on the lens, the video essayist lens, right, and see why she is uh, why she is correct, and understand why Cat Black was correct and what she was saying too. Now. That's not to say, I don't think anyone was correct when it came to bring up the sexual stuff. That's a separate thing. This is why lenses are important. This is why lenses are important, right? Okay. Is that really your argument? That I, by way of being cis, couldn't possibly be correct in a disagreement on trans issues with a trans person? I was always under the impression you valued the quality of the argument. Now, she didn't explicitly say this. She did implicitly say this. I hope anyone who watches my content would understand what the real message is here. And it becomes even more clear soon what she's really saying as soon as we see, like, I haven't heard any arguments yet, only your assurance you're extremely confident that you're- Again, this, this just reiterates over and over. She didn't, she didn't actually hear the arguments. Because I don't, because Vosh's main argument, the first time I didn't see it on Twitter, I heard it on his stream and I thought it was good. Right, but she probably didn't watch the stream. Um, and again, this argument, this is why Twitter sucks. This is why Twitter sucks. Anyways, so that's basically the conclusion, in my opinion, 